When we talk about humans, we usually think only of ourselves. Homo sapiens, the intelligent modern species that dominates the planet today. But if we turn back the clock just 50 to 60,000 years, Earth was a very different place. A planet shared by multiple human species, hunting, living, perhaps even lighting fires and sharing caves together. And, as we'll soon uncover, even interbreeding. During that period, at least six or seven human species coexisted with Homo sapiens. In Europe and Western Asia, there were the Neanderthals, Homo neanderthalensis, known for their robust bodies and brains nearly as large as ours. Farther east, in Siberia and the highlands of Asia, there lived a mysterious group known only through their DNA, the Denisovans. At the same time, Southeast Asia hosted two astonishingly small human species on the islands of Flores and Luzon. Homo floresiensis, nicknamed the Hobbit, stood under four feet tall, and Homo luzonensis, discovered as recently as 2019 in the Philippines. Back in Africa, the cradle of humankind, there were still other species. Homo naledi, with its puzzling mix of a small brain yet apparent burial rituals, shared the continent with Homo sapiens, who were beginning their great expansion across the globe. And these are only the human species we've uncovered through fossil bones. Recent genetic studies suggest there may have been even more ancient humans that we've never excavated, but who left traces of their DNA in us. These unidentified ancestors are known as ghost lineages, genetic signatures in modern human genomes that don't match any known archaic human species. They offer compelling evidence that the human past was far more diverse than previously imagined, with unknown relatives hiding in our very blood. So what happened when Homo sapiens began migrating out of Africa and encountered these distant cousins across Eurasia? The answers lie not only in fossils, but encoded within your own DNA. From contact and competition to more intimate encounters, which we'll explore in the next parts. This is one of the most fascinating chapters in evolutionary history, a multi-species world where Homo sapiens were far from alone. When Homo sapiens began migrating out of Africa around 60 to 70,000 years ago, they didn't enter an empty world. Instead, they stepped into a planet already populated by distant human relatives, from Neanderthals in Europe to Denisovans in Asia and possibly even Homo erectus in parts of Southeast Asia. And surprisingly, instead of simply replacing or outcompeting these other human species, sapiens interbred with them multiple times across many regions leaving behind vivid traces of DNA that still live on in our bodies today. This is no longer a hypothesis. Since the early 2000s, breakthroughs in genetic research have revealed the presence of archaic DNA fragments, segments that do not originate from Homo sapiens in the genomes of modern humans. Today, most people of European and Asian ancestry carry between 1 to 4% Neanderthal DNA, while Melanesians, Papua New Guineans, and some Southeast Asian populations carry up to 5% Denisovan DNA, a substantial figure when scaled across entire populations. One of the most remarkable discoveries came in 2018, when scientists sequenced the genome of an ancient girl nicknamed Denny. Her remains were found in Denisova Cave in Siberia and dated to about 90,000 years ago. Genetic analysis revealed something extraordinary. Denny's mother was a Neanderthal, and her father was a Denisovan, making her a first-generation hybrid between two entirely different human species. Even more fascinating, Denny's Denisovan father had some Neanderthal ancestry himself showing that interbreeding happened repeatedly across generations, not just once. Moreover, genetic modeling suggests multiple interbreeding events between sapiens and Neanderthals took place at various times and locations, from the Middle East 
through Central Asia and into Europe, a 2020 study found that Neanderthal haplotypes, groups of genes inherited together, show different ages, suggesting that these interactions weren't isolated incidents, but recurrent and widespread over tens of thousands of years. Why then have these archaic DNA segments survived in modern humans? The answer lies in adaptive introgression. The idea that genes from other species were naturally selected because they offered survival advantages. For instance, Neanderthal genes have been linked to immune responses, inflammatory regulation, skin and hair characteristics, and fat metabolism. All beneficial traits that helped sapiens adapt to the colder, harsher climates of Europe. Meanwhile, Denisovan genes contributed to high-altitude adaptation in modern populations like the Sherpa of Tibet, enabling them to thrive in low-oxygen mountain environments, a gift from ancient ancestors whose names they never knew. Some studies even suggest that Melanesians inherited Denisovan DNA from two distinct lineages, meaning their ancestors interbred with at least two separate groups of Denisovans, not just once but on multiple occasions. All of this points to a compelling conclusion. Interbreeding between human species was not an anomaly. It was a norm in our evolutionary journey. And more importantly, the results of those ancient encounters didn't stay locked in prehistoric caves. They're alive and well in every cell of your body today. When people hear that Homo sapiens interbred with other human species, they often assume it was accidental, a biological reflex that happened when small groups crossed paths in forests or on ancient plains. But increasingly, scientific research suggests that cross-species mating was neither rare nor random. In fact, it likely occurred repeatedly, possibly with selective patterns, and may have involved social behaviors. In the natural world, Hybridization between primate species, such as chimpanzees, baboons, and bonobos, is not unusual. In some cases, hybrid offspring are healthy, fertile, and even integrated into social groups. If ancient humans were genetically similar enough, then producing viable offspring who could also reproduce was entirely possible. The fact that Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA segments are still present in modern humans is proof that first and second generation hybrids not only survived, they thrived and passed on their genes through thousands of generations. But was this purely instinctual? Or was there emotional connection, personal choice, and even intergroup bonding? Some anthropologists argue that if ancient humans had language, tools, and complex social structures, then emotional relationships between individuals of different species were plausible, perhaps even common. Just as modern tribes sometimes engage in intergroup marriages to build alliances and expand gene pools, our ancestors may have done the same. Moreover, Certain Neanderthal genes found in modern humans are linked not just to physiological traits, but also to behavior, sleep patterns, and emotional regulation, suggesting that these ancient traits may have influenced how early humans connected socially, not just survived physically. Of course, it's possible that some instances of interbreeding involved coercion or violence, as has sadly occurred throughout human history. But current evidence does not support the theory of widespread forced mating. Rather, the genetic patterns suggest long-term interactions, repeated contact, and cultural exchange that allowed voluntary unions to emerge. In short, interbreeding was not an anomaly. It was a natural part of how Homo sapiens expanded their biological and social world. From these interactions arose the ancient hybrids individuals who embodied two worlds and whose mixed heritage still flows through our veins today. These weren't theoretical constructs or just entries in a gene model. Ancient hybrids between human species actually lived and in rare but clear cases left their mark. 
The famous example, Denny, whose DNA confirmed F1 hybrid between two archaic human species. But Denny was not alone. Genetic data suggests that hybrids occurred repeatedly across different time periods and geographic regions, indicating that this was not a fluke, but rather a regular part of prehistoric life. Socially, these hybrid individuals may have been accepted, marginalized, or formed distinct communities. With intermediate physical traits, such as mixed skull shapes, average body size, or strong bone structure, they might have had unique survival advantages or served as cultural intermediaries between human groups. Genetically, the legacy of these hybrids was far from neutral. Some of the DNA they passed on offered specific benefits. Neanderthal genes helped enhance immune function, skin density, and fat metabolism, traits especially useful for surviving colder climates. On the other hand, Denisovan genes helped modern-day Sherpa populations thrive in high-altitude environments with low oxygen levels. A particularly striking example is the EPAS1 gene, which improves oxygen processing at high altitudes and was almost certainly inherited from Denisovan ancestors. However, not all hybrid genes were beneficial. Some archaic DNA segments were removed over time through negative selection, meaning they offered no survival advantage and gradually disappeared. But the mere fact that some hybrid traits endured suggests that hybrid individuals didn't just survive. They played a lasting role in shaping who we are. Their legacy lives on in every cell of billions of people today. More than just genetic traces, they represent a powerful truth. We are not the product of purity, but of connection, the blending of different human worlds, of curiosity and coexistence across the evolutionary tree.